What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanna talk specifically about one of the settings in the camera section, the depth of field tool. I wanna to talk about why you would use it, when you would use it, and how it's helpful for you. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the requests I got when uh, we were talking about what rendering programs everybody uses um, last week was I got the request for more videos talking specifically about some of the effects contained inside of Lumion. And so I thought it would be a good idea to talk about some of those specifically regarding the photo section. And so if you want to follow along, I'm just using one of the example models. So if you go into, when you first open up, if you go to examples and open up this uh, Villa Wegner, then uh, you can follow along with this as well. And so all I've done is I've kind of flown around and I've placed my camera inside the kitchen area in here. So you can see I'm inside the kitchen area facing out. And so what I want to do is I want to go into photo mode by clicking on the little camera and I want to take a look at the I want to take a look at the depth of field effect and so the depth of field effect is an effect that gets added with a lot of these but um, let's say for example that you were to click on your styles and you were to select either the realistic style or the daytime style it doesn't really matter you can pick one of those and uh, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a real sky. So this is one of Lumion 9's um, HDRI fi files that goes in the background. So I'm just going to use this real sky. I may select something with a little bit more color to it, maybe like a sunset or something like that. Just something that's going to add a little more color and make this look a little bit different. But um, what I want to focus on specifically is I want to focus on the depth of field effect and what that can do with your camera. And so depth of field, basically it, um, it simulates a real camera from real life in the way that it focuses. So it allows you to place focus on different things. And the depth of field effect usually gets added with any of these styles. Um, it's on page two here. If you don't see depth of field, you can add it by going into effects and you're gonna go into camera and you're gonna select the option for depth of field. That's gonna add this in your in your uh, rendering. And you can see how right now it's set really low. So this slider in here affects the amount of depth of field that you're gonna have inside of your rendering. So you can see how as I click and drag this, really what this does is this makes parts of your image look blurry. And so really what this does is this is simulating a camera's focus effect. Effect. And what that means is if you've ever used like a manual camera or you've ever dealt with a camera that um, maybe a nicer camera that does a lot more with focusing, you might have noticed or even on your phone that sometimes when you point your camera at stuff, it uh, parts of it are a little bit blurry. And the reason for that is the way that the camera processes light through the lens um, allows it to focus on different areas. But like for example, if you were to look at the woman in this rendering, um, and this is kind of the same with your eyes too. Your eyes would focus on that different distance as would the camera, and they're not necessarily as focused right here. And so one of the things that's kind of unrealistic about renderings is like when depth of field is turned off, right? Everything is crystal clear, which is okay. Um, I mean, it looks great when you do this. It gives you a really great image. But if you're trying to get a really realistic image, sometimes adding a little bit of depth of field, meaning some of the stuff in areas where you don't want people to focus, being a little bit blurry can really increase your realism. And so the way the depth of field is going to work is you can adjust a couple different things about this. First of all, you can adjust the amount. And you can see how when I adjust the amount, what this is doing is this is adjusting how blurry things that are getting the depth of field effect applied to them are. So you can see how with the um, faucet here, this is getting blurrier the higher the amount that I have in here. And so a lot of the time you don't necessarily want a huge amount. This is a great example of a time when a little bit is probably going to go a long way. So you can see how as I drag this over, if I get just a little bit of blurriness on this faucet, for example, um, that's going to be more realistic, but it's also going to help you dictate where people's 
eye goes in your image. And so the next setting is the foreground and background. And so the foreground and background is going to adjust um, kind of uh, at, at what distance this effect is going to happen. So like for example, if I drag this all the way to the right, you can see how this is no longer being applied um, to things in the front of my rendering. If I drag it all the way to the left, you can see how this effect is really only being applied to things in the very front or the very foreground. So you can kind of mess around with that in order to adjust where in your image this occurs. And then this is going to kind of work hand in hand with your focus distance. So you can see how as I do this, um, I can set if my camera focuses on things that are close to the camera or far away from the camera. So you can see how if I drag this to the left, then I get a very clear image of my faucet right here, but my background is blurry. Where if I drag it to the right, you can see how my focus is applied more in the background than in the foreground, and uh, this faucet is now blurry. So you can adjust how your camera focuses on different things inside of Lumia. And so I think one thing that people don't really talk about that they really should is applications of this. So why does this matter, right? Um, like why, why do you care about this? Well, the reason for this is because this allows you to kind of adjust what people look at. You can use this as kind of an indicator to people like, okay, I want you to look at this thing in the scene. And the way that that could work is let's say for example, that I've got this view right here, I've got the the faucet on the lower right hand uh, crosshair, but then I've also got my uh, mountain out here in the background. Well, if I set this image up like this and I turn the depth of field up maybe even a little bit more and it's focused out here, what that's going to do is that's going to draw your eye back here. So if I was to render this and we'll just call this background focus. So if I was to render this, you can see how when you look at this image, you can tell that your eye is supposed to look out here because this is the area that's in focus where this area in the front maybe isn't. And this is probably overdone a little bit, but it gives you kind of an idea. You can see how this rendering, um, your, your eye is really drawn to where things are not blurry, where if we were to do the same thing or if we were to adjust our focus area right here, probably turn our depth of field down so you can tell what's going on in the background you can see how I can kind of fine adjust the way that this works um, by dragging the foreground background slider. But now if I was to render this image again, and I was to do foreground focus, you can see how this image is completely different in the sense that your eye is now drawn to the faucet rather than to the background. So when you're working in your renderings, if you want to draw people's eye to something in specific, you can use the depth of field effect in order to do that. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know anything about the depth of field effect? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.